Hi, my name is Katie. Um, I live in Chicago, Illinois. Um, I guess I've had Lyme for a little over 20 years now, I would guess. Um, I believe that I contracted it on a camping trip my senior year in high school. Uh, I didn't have the typical bullseye rash that I know of, um, but I went off to college, um, you know, six months later, and I had I did have a rash all over my body, which I didn't at the time. I had no idea what it was. Um, I went to a number of different dermatologists. I remember I even got a biopsy and. They weren't sure what it was. So um, fast forward a couple of years. My first joint pain was in my hands and my, uh, my knuckles and my wrists. And no clue what that was from. I just thought, okay, well, maybe this might go away. Didn't, get, didn't go away. Um, just got worse with time and actually spread to all my joints, um, elbows, knee, toes, shoulders, um, just muscle achiness, like I had run a marathon every morning when I woke up. So I started having those symptoms and I, and I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go to a rheumatologist. I have joint pain. I'll go to a rheumatologist. And, um, you know, as I mentioned, I live in Chicago. We have great hospitals here. So I went to see a rheumatologist at one of the hospitals nearby, a good, a good hospital. And they did some tests and asked me about my symptoms and, um, you know, the great imitator Lyme, as it's called. Uh, not, not surprisingly, I got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Um, even though I had tested negative for the RE marker, she still gave me that diagnosis, which, you know, I just, it, I, it didn't feel right to me. Um, she put me on some medic, different medications, and one of them was um, methotrexate, I remember, which is a, is, is a cancer medication. Um, so some serious side effects associated with that. I hated taking it. The medication didn't help. Um, actually, my symptoms got a lot worse. And uh, the winters were so bad here, Chicago winter, so it's freezing and cold. And um, the, the joint pain was so bad that I, I remember having trouble walking some days. Um, and I thought, you know, maybe if I move to a warmer climate, my symptoms will be better. Um, my quality of life will be better. So that's what I decided to do. I moved to Austin, Texas. Um, I moved away from my friends and my family and my job. Um, and, you know, upon moving down there, I also changed doctors. Um, and the doctor down there thought that I should start taking a biologic, you know, Humira, drug similar to that for auto autoimmune diseases. Um, it's a pen that you actually inject yourself with. Um, I was really scared to take this medication because you had to inject it yourself and it's an immune, it's immune suppressing. So that made me nervous as well. My health rapidly declined in the next month. Um, I couldn't go to work. I was sleeping 12 hours a day. So I had to go on disability for my job. Um, at, at the time I was 25 or 26 on disability. Had to uh, move home with my parents and was just sleeping all the time in pain, um, joint pain. I had all these weird skin manis manifestations with it as well. And brain fog, I uh, felt like I just 
you know, for, for those of you who don't have Lyme and aren't familiar with what brain fog feels like, it's like you've taken Benadryl and you're just so fuzzy and foggy and you know what you want to say, but you can't think of the right words. I, you know, told myself I was going to stop taking all those RA drugs because they weren't helping. And did I even have RA? I didn't know. So I stopped taking all that medication and was in a really bad place for about three months. I would say the the worst time of my life. Um, I finally got the proper, the right diagnosis um, from a DO here in Chicago and she said you know given all your symptoms and your joint pain have you ever been tested for Lyme disease she gave me the test and a couple days later she called me to tell me that it was positive which was a weird feeling um, that I knew what it was finally and that I felt that there was going to be answers now that I would get I would get I would get treatment and I would be better. Um, which you know isn't the case. I uh, she did put me on antibiotics, which I took for about a year. And within a couple months, my joint pain started to dissipate, which wow, it was, it was like a miracle for me because I had had it for so long and, um, it was, it was amazing. It was, it was a miracle. Um, you know, so after treatment, I guess I would say I was almost 80 to 85% better, but the symptoms never fully go away. Um, you know, like I said, I've had it for 20 years and, I actually feel really grateful for the place I'm in right now because I know some people have it way worse than me, way, way worse than me. It's helped me to become strong and it's helped me, it's led me to a place where I want to be with my career because I realize that life's too short to to not do what you want to do or not do what you love. So in some ways it's been helpful for me, but what's upsetting is that Lyme isn't taken seriously, but it's a big deal. A lot of people are suffering and I wish for research and proper diagnostic tests and for doctors to be informed and to know the symptoms and to ask the right questions. It's your job. And it's a big deal. I I wish we were taken seriously. If there's one thing I want people with Lyme to know, uh, for sufferers to know, is that you're your biggest advocate and you have to advocate for yourself. And I learned that um, through this whole process. I thought that, you know, I always thought you just go to the doctor when you're sick and they give you medicine and that's it. But it doesn't work like that. You have to you have to read up on the Lyme literature yourself. You have to do research. You have to take care of yourself. If you know something's wrong and you feel something's wrong, you know your body best and don't let doctors tell you that it's in your head or that nothing's wrong or that you're okay when you're not.